Hello guys, Duran slash Lawrence Wayne here and welcome to episode 4 of the Commodore 32 tutorial series. Today we'll be making our program do something a little more useful by taking user inputs. So we're back where we were in episode 3. We still have the same program here. So I'm just going to delete some stuff here prepared for this episode. So we're just going to need this and maybe rename this to um, now nah, we'll just keep it like that. Var is going to store what our user gives us so that we can basically use this variable in other things. So, you know, there's something useful. Uh, so we're going to look at the manual first and we're going to find the input function. Here we are, right underneath print. Destination where to store the input value to. Takes the last value given by the user and saves it in the destination variable. Use new input flag to blah blah blah. Uh, so, yeah, input and var should therefore take the input from the user and save it in the variable var. Now what we're going to do is print var out and uh, yeah, that should work. I guess. Let's give it a shot. I'm going to upload this pretty simple program. Reset the computer. And turn it on. Now we're going to. What? It didn't even give me a chance to put inputs. Clearly, something is wrong. Ah, yes, this was actually intentional because, as it turns out, input does not wait for user input. It takes the last given input immediately. So, because we didn't give any input, uh, it just I'll put it zero because no input was given. But if we were to give an input now and then turn it on, it would work. But this is, of course, inconvenient. What we want to do is wait for the user to give input first before, uh, you know, continuing. So we need to wait for input. How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to use loops. There are two loops in this programming language for no, there's no for loops actually. There's a while and an until loop. So um, basically, there's a two ways in which you can use loops. Um, you can go while a is larger than b, or while a equals five. So this would, for example, keep going while the variable a is equal to five. Or well variable var is equal to 5 and then there's the until loop which does exactly what you would expect it keeps going until var is equal to 5 so in most languages you'd have a double equals to compare numbers there's only a single equals here now uh, to choose uh, no hold on first there's also another way to use it and that's with flags these are basically uh, things that are either true or false and they're from the system. So as you can see you can check the buttons and I just noticed uh, I messed up the manual a bit here, but uh, yeah These would then tell you whether the levers or the buttons in the control room are on These are some low-level ones. You don't need to worry about you can use a random number You know like there's a random chance of being true or false, but this is the one we're going to worry about new input so until new input as you can see turns green to show that it is a valid flag system variables and flags are always going to be green in notepad plus plus and now we need square brackets again and inside that you can put code that will run until new inputs so there's new input so uh, you can just leave this blank and it will do nothing until there's new input but that's a little boring. We want to do something more interesting while we wait for input. So I'm going to go and look here. Lamp on and lamp off. So these two commands, uh, they turn on or off these lamps over here. So with them, you can make the lamps blink or indicate to the user that we are now waiting for input, which is very useful because in many programs, the user would not really know what's going on, what the computer program is doing, 
and they'd just be like, well, do I need to give input, or do I need to push a button, or do I need to stand on a pressure plate? They, they won't know what to do. So that's what these lamps are basically for. We're going to link blink this we're going to blink the second lamp to indicate that we are waiting for input so do that lamp on two and lamp off two so this is going to turn on lamp two and then turn it off and because this is a loop if there's no new input we'll turn it back on turn it back off turn it back on turn it back off now an interesting thing to note is that it only checks this at the end of these instructions so just an interesting thing to note. The loop will keep going even if there is new inputs until it reaches the end. Only when it reaches the end of these two lines would it go check this and then continue going. It's a little complicated to understand, but that's just how it works. Another thing is this has to be a number. It can't be. You can't enter var. It has to be a static number. It'll complain otherwise. So yeah, this program is going to wait for new input, blink the lamp, then once we have input, we're going to store it in var, and we're going to print that out. So, let's upload this little program. And we are going to run it, as usual. And we go over here, and you can see this lamp immediately starts blinking. Now as you can see, it stays off for longer than it stays on, and the reason for that is because it turns it on, turns it off, and then it checks this condition, and then it goes back to the beginning. And those two operations take a little bit of time. They take more time than it does to turn it on or off, which explains why it's off for longer. So now I'm going to push this button, and I'm going to enter a value, uh, 1, 2, 3 for example. The lamp's going to stop blinking after a while. It only checks the condition once it's done running the code, of course. And it's going to output 123. There we go. It worked. So yeah, uh, if you're going to make loops like this, it's best not to include lots and lots and lots and lots of code here. Because or for waiting for input, because that means if there is new input, it's still going to be doing all this code. I know I've said this like a million times because I, I don't know how to explain this. And I've seen so many people struggle with that concept that loops only check this when they're done. So I hope you get that. A lot of people in my IT class have been struggling with that to understand that concept. And I can't ex seem to explain it very well. So yeah, that takes input and it prints it out. Now we can do something more interesting with this perhaps. Maybe we can take in two numbers and add them. Let's do that. Var1 and var2. So we're just going to copy paste this code. Maybe make a blink lamp 1 for the first value, blink lamp 3 for the second one. So, there. Yeah. And then we make another variable called output. And output. Sorry for me mistyping stuff by the way it's because of my the way my mic's placed I can hardly see my keyboard and it's in the way of my fingers and stuff so output is going to equal var1 plus var2 so what this program is going to do is going to wait for new input blink lamp 1 while we wait and then once this is done the loop's going to end and we're going to take the input given stored in var1 then we're going to wait for input again blink lamp 3 while we wait and uh, when we get input, we store it in var2. Now, once we have these two variables of the input, uh, we're going to s set a variable called output to the sum of var1 and var2, and then we're going to print out... Oops. ...the answer of these two added together. So, pretty simple. Another thing I forgot to mention in my other video, maybe I edited it in, I don't know, because I haven't actually edited it yet. I recorded this one right after. Um, you can't do multiple math operations in the same piece of code. So keep that in mind. You, can't, you also can't do math in uh, function arguments. So for example, I can't copy this into here 
it's going to complain. So one operation per line, like this. So yeah, I'm probably going to edit that in anyway, but you know, just so you know. All right, so we're going to upload that program. So this is a basically a simple calculator program that we just made. Let's um, run it. And here we go. Lamp one is now blinking, waiting for our first number. We're going to enter uh, 12. Now that lamp's going to stop blinking eventually. And lamp three is going to blink, telling us we're now waiting for our second number. So we're about here in our code, this little loop here. Again, everything is followed sequ sequentially. Uh, we're going to enter and uh, three, two, one. Bit more creative this time. And it's going to add them together and print out the answer, which is 333. Hooray! You could also enter in negative numbers or something if you want. And it would still work. So if you make the second number a negative number, it would, you'd basically be subtracting. Uh, yeah, you can edit this program, perhaps make it multiply, make it divide, or something. Uh, but uh, that's it for this episode. In the next episode, we'll be looking into more uses for loops, and perhaps if statements, and some more general programming stuff, like other features you can use. So, uh, Thanks for watching, hope you enjoyed it, and um, bye.